Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting video. This one you can't see my face because I've got a uh, disease. However, let's crack on with this. In this video we're going to look at how to create poses and save them for future use. So as you can see I've got my character loaded into my scene. This is a character that we used in the last episode and I'm going to make sure that I've got her selected in my scene by going to scene and uh, selecting her there. And then I can go into my Modify tab and click on the little Running Man icon, which is a second icon across the top in the Modify tab. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to click on Edit Motion Layer. And what you can see now is that the skeleton has appeared and also these little balls, which are joints. Now, if we want to change the appearance of these, we can actually click on this viewport controller here. We can turn those on and off and we can also turn on and off the bone display. And we can also select this icon here to actually change the inverse kinematics controller size, the little ball size, and we can also change their opacity as well. So you can adjust the appearance of your controls nice and simple. From here, there are two modes that you can use. You can use inverse kinematics or force kinematics. In this one, I'm basically going to generally stick to inverse kinematics, mainly because it's the simpler of the two. However, you can if you want to just simply go into FK mode and that will then give you a list of all of the bones and then you can select each one and rotate them that way however inverse kinematics is better because it means that we can actually lock our feet to the floor and do other certain operations so from this point on it really is a simple case of selecting the bone that you want to adjust and adjusting it so let's do that if I wanted to select the foot bone for example I can click on the icon in my little edit motion layer button here now if I press the home key it will actually zoom in on that handle and then if I press the W key it will give me the move widget if I press the E key it'll give me the rotate widget and then those are the two things that I can adjust now what you'll notice is currently that my move key is in orientation of the world and my rotate key my rotate widget is in local orientation and you can actually adjust this by coming up to the top here and you can change local rotate to world rotate like so and you can also do the same thing for your move tool if you were just to click on that there you can set it to world move or local move depending on how you want to do this so for example if I wanted to put this foot forwards as you can see because I'm dragging the body what the what is happening is that the foot is going to stay in one place until I push it beyond the limits that it can actually do so if I were to zoom out a little bit so that you could see the whole body there like that you can see that the only the foot that I'm trying to move is actually moving currently and the rest of the body is trying to naturally move as if this were an actual human being and I was trying to get them to point their toe as far forward as possible the rest of the body is adapting to that pose so that it looks as natural as possible which is pretty handy compared to the abortion that is the da studio posing system this is a lot cleverer and this gives us a lot more flexibility a lot more things we can do so if i was to bring this back you can see now that rather than reverting the pose to standing a pose she's actually now brought this foot back as if a natural person were and in fact her legs are now slightly bent so if i were to select the hip bone I can now drag that up there is going to come a point where her legs can't get any straighter and her feet are actually going to lift off the floor if I press ctrl z I can get myself back to a position where that's the case and as you can see if I try to push her through the floor using the hip bone her legs will actually bend in a natural way so let's just give her a some kind of a pose I'm thinking of maybe just having one hip slightly raised and lowered so it looks like she's putting all of the weight on one leg. So that being the case, what we need to do is we need to pull this knee back so that that has the appearance of being locked out. And then we can lower her right hip down, provided that it will actually let us. We may have to actually rotate the pelvis instead. So let's try doing that. As you can see, currently it's actually trying to lift that foot rather than bend that one. So what we actually might have to do 
is move this foot outwards in that direction so that the weight is now placed on this foot. Obviously this does present us with the issue of her upper body being slightly wonky. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the chest and we're actually going to rotate it back so that it's there we go. Now we've got the appearance that she's actually bearing her weight on her left leg. She's locked her, popped her hip to one side and her right leg is just kind of out to the side. And we could bend that or do whatever we wanted to. It's not really a big issue. We could, let's for example, rotate that knee. And it's going to struggle with that slightly because at the moment we have her feet locked into the floor. Not the end of the world. We can sort that out in a minute. In fact, if I was to just select the toe, press the home key, what I can actually do is I can use these small squares. And if I were to rotate, I can actually rotate the toes or the foot around those points and those points stay fixed on the floor, which is also pretty handy. Now, obviously that does present the problem that her foot is actually now hovering slightly off the floor. So what we're going to have to do is bend her toes ever so slightly and then we'll have to actually move this down until it's actually on the floor like so. That looks pretty close. That's pretty good like so. So now we've got the appearance that she's uh, actually got that foot on tiptoes. Not necessarily the most natural looking pose, but it kind of makes the point. If I were to hit the home key again and zoom back in, I could of course rotate this back down like so that does of course bring her foot below the uh, ground so we're going to have to resolve that issue well but let's just revert that change and then we can actually select that part of the foot and just bring it up and there you go that's actually back on the floor so that's fine okay so that's our bottom half of the body and we can just decide what we want to do with the top half now looking at the pose that she's in does rather lead you to think that this arm should be kind of down behind her hip which it almost is where we want it to be but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to bring the hand back so i'm going to select that bone come in nice and closely and as you can see i'm holding down the alt key and using my left and right mouse buttons to maneuver my camera around the scene when i'm not trying to zoom in on a specific bone and then i'm using the home key when i want to uh, focus on one specific bone now what i would generally say if someone's hand is in the position where it's kind of behind their bum the tendency is to rotate the forearm inwards so if i was to go to my rotate tool generally speaking people tend to kind of rest the the back of their thumb against their thigh when they're in this position and it looks more more natural doesn't it and then now what we got to do is just decide what we want to do with this arm here i'm thinking i might bring it up so that she's got a hand behind her neck perhaps so let's try that and this is where things get you have to be a little bit more finessed in this one because obviously the shoulder joint has a lot of maneuverability in it circumduction is it's a, a, a fine art, shall we say. So we don't want it to look like her shoulders rolled completely forwards or completely back. So we have to be a little bit careful how we do this. And amongst other things, we also have to make sure that we don't twist her armpit into an unusual position because then that will make her armpit clip out of the clothing, which of course is going to ruin the illusion of this being a real person. So I'm going to bring that up like so. And at this point, we're going to need to rotate again. And as you can see, we're at the stage now where things are starting to get a bit stretched around the armpit area. And this is a weight mapping issue that comes from doing things automatically in Character Creator. So if I were looking to use these clothing items seriously for rendering, then obviously I would go back in and adjust the weight map so that it wasn't rucking up like this in the armpit because that would obviously be a little bit uh, frustrating but it's easy enough to do so it's not the end of the world okay so if we were to bring up her hand so that her forehand were resting uh, forehead uh, we're touching the back of her hand like this that's actually not a completely unnatural looking pose it's actually quite good you are going to have to of course zoom in 
and just see if you're making contact there. I think I'm almost, if I want to be able to see that, I can actually turn off the items there so that I can just see the mesh and the bones. And it looks pretty dang close. Maybe rotate this hand away ever so slightly. So I'll bring my handles back, do that, and then I can just move it away from her forehead a touch so that it's not clipping through basically and then yeah that looks a little bit more natural there happy days now let's just move her head slightly as well we're going to tilt it towards the hand ever so slightly a fraction in that direction and then a fraction away from the hand like so looks pretty good and one of the things that you can also do, if we were to grab our right hand handle like this, we can actually move our fingers. If I click on that and slide my mouse up and down, I can actually control the opening and closing of the whole hand. And I can also do the same thing with each individual finger and each individual finger joint just by clicking and dragging on my shape there. So if I were now to come out of my edit pose or edit motion layer mode you can see we've got a pose it's not the best pose in the world but it's it's pretty good so now we have to be able to save it and all i have to do is come back into my content you can see i've already got one pose saved here if i were to now hit in my custom in my animation pose folder i've created one called matt standing poses and i'm just going to hit save it's already got animation slash pose say type selected so all i have to do now is go forehead wipe hit pop just so that i have a vague idea of what's going on and it's not going to like that because i've got a slash in it so i just have to remove that hit enter and then not only does it save my pose which it will do in a couple of moments but it also creates a preview of what that pose looks like and it is taken directly from the screen preview image that you have here so if you wanted to improve it you could make sure you're zoomed in as far as you can click on save or you can click on overwrite whichever just hit overwrite and hit ok it's going to save exactly the same pose details it'll take a second to do it but now it's updated my uh, little thumbnail there so that it's actually a really nice solid looking pose and if i want to i can just double click on the other pose that i've got it will put her straight into that double click on the one we just created lo and behold not only have we created a decent pose but we've also saved it so we can reuse it on other characters thanks very much for watching that guys i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye